and still, and I know they guess the system is sort of on the coach as well, but yeah, I would go with that option. I was going to say it's a system issue. Yeah. Um, and that involves the coaching staff. I feel like uh, there should be changes there, but that will not happen because of what we already talked about with the, all the injuries you're going to see no coaches get fired, no GM get fired. It's, it's going to be status quo going next year. The same thing, same lineup, same system. Well, that is definitely a system problem. Yeah, that perfectly leads into Alex's question. Now, this is your opinion. This isn't who you th- what you think is going to happen. But he said, would you rather uh, A, fire Randy, B, fire Bob Murray, C, fire both, or D, fire neither? Oh, Jesus, uh, fire Randy. Yeah. I'm a little partial to Bob. Bob's made some good deals, and yeah. he's drafted well. There's some good things to say about Bob Murray. There's not a whole lot of things that besides Randy Carlisle has a Stanley Cup than there is to say about Randy Carlisle. Yeah. And let's be real. He won a Stanley Cup because John Gibson and Scott Niedermeyer and Chris Pronger. I mean, yeah. sorry, and Timo Solani. Yeah. <laughs> you can't look past those guys and say it was all coaching. Um, yeah. I would not mind seeing Randy Carlisle be replaced this offseason. If you're going to say for who, uh, I want to see who's available this summer. I, I have a feeling there's going to be more firings this summer other than Elaine Vigneault. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I tend to agree with you. I just think, you know, I wouldn't fire Bob yet, but I feel like he has a lot to blame because I feel like he's put together this team that doesn't fit the style of the NHL currently. I feel like he's he's building a team for the past, and, and it just it, it, it obviously hasn't worked, which is, I guess, what you would expect. Uh, I mean, the, the team he's put on the ice just hasn't adapted to the way the NHL is supposed to be played today. So... There is a lot of blame on his shoulders, but the easy fire, and if you had to pick one, and who I'd, I'd want to see out to at least get some change in would be Randy Carlisle, because I feel like th- at least to bring in another guy with a different system, we talked about it on the last show, how if you can change up the system, I feel like we still have the players to make this work uh, if they're playing a different way and, and adapt a little bit better to the way the NHL is being played today. I feel like we have some guys in the lineup that can do that, and if you bring in a coach who could work that out of this team, I feel like that would would be interesting to see. But as in bringing guys in, I mean, the, the cup window's closing. It's Do you bring in a guy who focuses on winning now? Do you bring in a guy who can transition this team, you know, who could, could look to winning in the playoffs, but then could transition this team and be a part of the team when they're losing and then when they're better down the road? Or do you just go with the easy promotion and fire Randy and bring up Dallas Eakins from, from San Diego? and plug him in for a season and see how he does. I mean, it's interesting because there's some different avenues you could go based on, you know, how you think this team's going to do and if you want this new guy long-term or if you're going to move him out to bring in a different coach to, to guide them long-term down the road. It, it's an interesting situation. If you're going to fire Randy Carlisle and bring up Dallas Aikens, that means you're talking about a full-fledged rebuild, in my opinion. You're talking about yeah. bringing in young guys and, and, a, and rebuilding this team from the foundation up. Because that's what Dallas Higgins is known for. I mean, look what he's done with San Diego. They're a competitive team. I think they missed the playoffs this season, but they were close. Um, and look at all the guys he's brought up through that lineup in, into the uh, into the Ducks organization. So I feel like if you're going to go Dallas Higgins, you're talking about a rebuild. If you're talking about Elaine Vigneault, that means you're going to win now. There's got to be somebody in between that can transition this team. Um, when the possibility was out there for Travis Green being part of the Ducks organization, I think that would have been a good move for yeah. the Ducks. I, I just feel this based on his qualifications and his ability to win at other levels would bring a lot to Anaheim. Chris pops in on the chat and says, Sutter, do you think Daryl Sutter as an Anaheim Ducks coach would be realistic? One, and two, would it work? We, well, we talked about this when we had our whole, I think this was on the second or third show we had where we broke down like about eight or nine different coaches, and he was one of the guys we had listed as a guy you could bring in and, and possibly be a coach for the Ducks. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, I feel like he'd be that guy that you would bring in to win now and not necessarily transition this team after their windows closed. I feel like that would be the option, one of the options you'd bring in to do that. So, And I feel like that's what Randy Carlo essentially was too, was a guy that you would bring in to, to try and win now and wouldn't necessarily be the guy you look to transition this team down the road so if 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 uh Suter does come in if sorry Sutter does come in I feel like it's it's not long term you know you give him a couple seasons see how he can do and then you move on and you bring in a guy who can work with this team bring in some younger players and move on but in my opinion I would just like to see that guy now you know see what he can do you maybe he wins you 
a couple playoff series if, if or whatnot, but then you at least you don't have to fire another guy to bring in the guy who's going to transition you. <laughs> Gordon Bombay caught me yawning on the phone. I tried <laughs> to turn the one the mic away. That's funny. <laughs> no, I'd agree with you there on on both uh, on on Sutter and uh, what you're going to do here with the Ducks. On um, well, he's he's a win now coach. He's not somebody looking to the future to build up. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, we're we're almost done here. We got a couple more questions. Alex Alex asked, "Is Getzloff an effective captain?" Yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. think anything's wrong with Ryan Getzloff. He's got all the fire you need, and the experience and the talent to back it up. I have zero problem with what Getzloff puts on the ice. Yeah, I mean, he made a couple bonehead moves tonight, got himself out of the game. But I mean, you can understand the frustrations are high when you're losing. I think when he got kicked out, it was like six seven one. I mean, I get it. He's a guy who wants to win. He's a competitive guy. So, uh, no, I think he's an effective captain. I mean, he's led this team since he's come back from injury this year. He's been the Ducks' best player. I mean, you can't ask much more from, from your captain to really lead this team and get them into the playoffs. I hope this talk isn't coming up again. I, I remember, I don't know if it was, I think it was two seasons ago, maybe maybe even a little bit after last season, how people were saying, oh, Ryan Kessler should be the captain of this team instead of Ryan Getzlaff, and I just laughed that off, and I said, I... I don't know how you can even think of no, that just based off. That. It's, it's always no. recency bias. I mean, Getzlaff will not show up maybe for a series of people like, oh, he shouldn't be captain. Kessler had like a good, I think, a good playoffs there. And everybody was on the hype train of, of ripping the C off Getzlaff and putting it on Ryan Kessler. And I couldn't believe that. And we don't hear about that much more. I hope it, I hope it doesn't come up anymore because that's just ridiculous. I mean, this guy's proven year in, year out that he's uh, an effective and deserving captain on this team. No, okay. I agree. Gordon Bombay says, do. oh my god, not that again. <laughs> yeah, we can't go through that again. Yeah. Um, Alejandro asked, is Perry a fourth liner now? No, he's a third liner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a promotion. I, I think so, too. I, you know, 50 points is still good. No, and, it's and again, great. It's, it's the same thing. It's the same criticism we kind of akin to, to Nick Ritchie and how we expect more from him because of his draft position, we expect more from Corey Perry because of his contract. Um, but 50 points is good. I mean, it's it's essentially a second liner or third liner. I feel like, you know, he still provides value in the top nine for the Ducks. I, don't, I think saying he's a fourth liner is is pretty bad considering, I mean, he's still putting up. I mean, I don't know many uh, fourth liners. You put up 50 points, right? So No, not many. It, it's tough to it's tough to be that harsh on him. I mean, this playoffs have not been great for him. He was a guy we expected to step up and do well based off his playoffs last year. So it's been disappointing. But really, I mean, saying he is a, is a fourth liner is a bit harsh. Uh, moving into the last couple questions we have here, Alex kind of summing it up. He says, "Will the Ducks win Game Four if they do? Is a comeback even one percent possible?" Uh, no and yes. They will not win game four, but statistically speaking, that possibility is there. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're going to be sad just like me on Wednesday. I just, I don't see it happening. I just, yeah. I really don't. I, I'm holding hope and um, looking back in the past, and, and obviously it, it really has no comparison to the series now, but how that uh, that Sharks and Kings series folded out where they got lit up for their first game, first three games of the series, and then they just figured it out in the last four. I don't see it happening. I could see the Ducks maybe winning Game Four, I mean, it just because it's do or die. It's it's really do or die. I mean, this game tonight essentially should have been like that, but they can't it, score five on five. Who yeah, put the puck in the net. There's I don't know. No I mean, things things, things can change. I mean, the, this team at times during the regular season have gone on stretches where they've they've scored goals and they've looked very good, and, and the top line has has changed things around, and the and the third line has gotten going. And, and the guys have chipped in all over the lineup. I mean, they have the ability to change it around for four games in a row against the, the, the way the Sharks have been playing. I don't see it. I can see them winning one game in game four. Maybe at most stringing together two wins, but winning four straight against this team. It wouldn't take the Ducks just playing well. It would take a full-on collapse from the San Jose Sharks as well. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not going to just be a great effort from the Ducks. The Sharks are going to have to completely fall apart for them to come back and win this series. But as for like a game four win, I could see it. I could see the Sharks getting a little bit complacent. You know, they're up three, nothing, maybe not coming out with as much effort as they have in the first three games. And the Ducks kind of catching them by surprise and winning that game. But it's going to take a lot of effort and a a lot of collapse on the Sharks part for the Ducks to win this series and come back. I mean, 
just it doesn't happen that often for a reason because it's almost impossible to come back from down 3-0 against any team in the playoffs. The teams who get to the playoffs got here for a reason, and uh, most of them don't lose four straight games. It just doesn't happen. No. Uh, last question from Chris was a three-parter. Uh, he said, if the Ducks look awful in game four, does Randy Carlo come back next year? We answered this. Uh, we think he does no matter what, just based off what Bob Murray has said. Be very surprised if he didn't. Yeah, I know he's coming back. And who do you replace him with? I mean, I don't know. That's too tough to say. I I can't imagine him going with Dallas Aikens. I mean, it would it would be great because that would mean this team's looking at a new, younger direction. I feel like that would be good for the team. Um but, I mean, Bob would more or less try to go after a guy like Elaine Vigno or somebody else who pops up who we haven't heard of yet, uh, who hasn't been let go, who's just or who's just sitting around that hasn't been picked up. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't think anyone's going to take his uh, his spot. Randy Carlisle and Bob Murray both safe. Yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up here. Dean said in the chat, he said, come on, I can't be the only sadist in here who's excited for a game four. I mean, I, I can admit I'm somewhat excited for because I'm always excited to watch Ducks hockey, even though that tonight's game was was depressing, and I think all that excitement wore off after the fourth Sharks goal. But you know, with with the fact that, like you said, there's still that statistical chance the Ducks could come back. There's always that excitement, that hope. We all we all still believe in this team. Is as slim a chance as there is. I, I still find myself getting a little bit excited for Game Four. I'm not. Um, I'm not looking forward to that game at all i feel like this <laughs> ducks team has not shown me anything other than disappointment this postseason eddie i'm a, i'm a giant ducks fan i don't want anyone to think yeah. that i'm just sitting here trying to bash this team and having a great time about it i was genuinely bummed and genuinely ripped through a six pack in under 45 minutes or an hour because i was pissed watching this game tonight just how poorly it was played um i want them to win i want them to win four straight i, I just don't see it happening if they win two out of this, two, I would be stoked. I, I just don't see it ever happening. And as Chris just said, if they if they come back and win the series, Randy Carlyle will never be fired. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is definitely the truth. I 100% agree with that. Um, I don't see it happening. I honestly feel like we'll be talking on Wednesday night about how the series wrapped and what we can look forward to for an offseason show and our draft show and our, and our free agency show where the Ducks are going to be making minor moves here. Um, I hope it's not the case, but I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I, I respect that. I, I mean, I feel like people are on the fence a bit. I feel like there's some bit of excitement for Game 4, but there's a lot of pessimism and a lot of disappointment. And just knowing that the Ducks season is likely over on Wednesday, if not shortly after that, has a lot of people just not looking forward to I mean, that's partial reason why I'm not looking forward to Game 4. I still have that, that slight bit of excitement because there's a chance that they, they can turn things around because I've seen at, when they're at their best what this team could do, but there are no signs that they're going to get back there. So I can see where that disappointment and where that uh, pessimism, where it stems from. So we'll yeah, be back. I, I picked them in six. Yeah. I picked that team to win in six. I picked the Kings to win in six over yeah. Vegas. It ain't happening. <laughs> not I, happening. Well, to be fair, I, I picked Philly to win in seven, and that's not looking too great either. So we'll, <laughs> you uh, win some, you lose some. We'll see how it goes. I mean, we'll be back no matter what on Absolutely. Wednesday. I don't feel. I feel like it can't get more depressing than this. I mean, yeah, their season could be go could be over on Wednesday, but this was an eight one loss in a game three. It's almost as low as it can get unless you lose like 10-1 in game four so we'll be back no matter what um we'll be working on some things hopefully in the off season getting a couple people on we won't have of course as many shows because there'll be no games to cover but i'm sure we'll cover things like the draft and whatnot throughout the throughout the season of course patrick will be doing his show with his partner jason and in the puck guys i'll be doing my show uh, on a semi-regular basis with Mike on Ducks and Pucks, so we'll be hitting you from different angles throughout the throughout the off season as as often as we can. Uh, Forever Mighty Three Stars will run until the Ducks are out of the playoffs, at least this edition of it. So that could be as early as Wednesday. I'll have the updated leaderboard tomorrow. So if you're listening, well, I mean, I guess later today now because it is for both of us past midnight now. 
Yeah, it's almost 3.30 your time. <laughs> yeah.